Brian Christensen's Trophy Hunter exhibit is proving to be quite an attraction for the wide variety of preserve visitors who will all find something worthwhile to wonder about, although maybe for very different reasons. The messaging of it is really good for our day-to-day -day visitors who aren't necessarily here to see art. They're more here for the natural history and the animals and et cetera, et cetera, but they can get a lot out of the fun and whimsical nature of Brian's art. The art lovers who come to see what we're doing in the gallery get the deeper levels as well. So it just worked out for us in a lot of ways. We think most folks will enjoy the story behind Brian's work and how the disorienting experience of going to college in Reno to study art led him to recollect memories of the world he left behind in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I was making a lot of other work that I wasn't connected to and I was sort of obsessing over deer and just thinking about um, the home and sort of ideas about comfort and just everything that has to do with furniture or you know any any household item and so I, I found actually a mattress in a cemetery that I picked up and took it back to the studio and made a deer and all of this has rolled out of that. And that's how he discovered that the ritual of being an urban furniture hunter involved delving into dumpsters at odd hours, looking for as yet unrecognized artistic treasures. A lot of times I'll see a piece of furniture, I'll know exactly what it's going to be. And sometimes I'll have to bring it back to the studio and sit with it for a while. It might even be a couple weeks before I figure out exactly what I'm going to do. Once he discovers the soul of a sofa, he may reshape it, but he also uses it whole and in its entirety. That's the premise, is that I use one piece of furniture for one sculpture. And the creative influences of a homespun and handcrafted family life are evident everywhere in his fashioning of these freestanding 3D deer. You know, my mom makes all the dresses for her grandchildren, and so there was the sewing thing going on there. Um, my, my dad and my grandpa, they were big into carpentry. They would always make toys every Christmas. So I was always around that. But he has also taken recycling to a higher aesthetic level by preserving and displaying every material part of his artistic process. Everything, sawdust, staples. After I cut the wood, I sweep up all the sawdust, off the floor, everything. So every, everything gets saved, literally. The remnants piece is interesting because it, it references those Native American hunting traditions and that you don't waste anything. You save every tiny little piece of that animal and you find a use for it at some point now or later or you trade it to someone else who has a use for it. Even though they've been assembled from such a collection of incongruous objects that may be the very reason this potpourri of deer are completely satisfying, wonderful fun and alive in the imagination. I'm very connected to the deer personally and this work personally, but I'm also interested in it reaching a, being able to reach a broad audience, you know, then being able to immediately recognize that it's a deer and then, and then start there and then go wherever, you know, they can go. You know, they recognize the form and then they get in there and they recognize the particular pieces of it and they go, oh my God, this used to be furniture, what? I never would have thought of that. So it's a lot of fun for that.